uh, welcome to lesson 37 of the course on industrial automation and control of NPTEL. Uh, in this lesson, we shall be talking about a computer network or a, rather I should say a, a network of intelligent devices which are used for industrial automation. So, it is a network, it is a digital com computer communication network. However, the various devices which talk on this network are the devices used for automation. For example, it can be a sensor or it can be a controller or it can be an operator station. So, we will see uh, how this, this sort of a network can uh, has been proposed, its standard has been proposed and what kind of functionality and benefits it can bring for a factory wide control system. So, we start with the instructional objectives. So, the instructional objectives are firstly the student will be able to explain basic motivations for a plant network, how it actually helps to have a network for process automation. They will describe in the first part of this lecture which will be followed in the next lesson, will describe the physical network structure, how the various wires are connected <coughs> and what kind of advantages it brings in terms of you know installation commissioning. Secondly, it will describe the field work <coughs> bus network protocol, overall network protocol structure as we know that uh, computer communication is actually a complex uh, protocol where layers of software exist and they talk with each other to finally realize the communication between two uh, geographically uh, far away devices. Okay. So, we will first we will take a look at basic look at this structure and compare it with a with a general and there is a there is a general computer communication model which is very popular and well known that is called the open system intersect in, interconnect model. So, it will <coughs> compare the protocol model of the field bus with the OSI model and you will be able to describe the mechanism of coordinating communication among the devices on the bus. Actually the lower two layers of this communication will be discussed in, in this part of the lesson. So, first of all we need to know what is a field bus. Actually a field bus is actually a digital communication network which is designed for interconnecting smart field bus devices and control systems for, for plant wide control and automation activities. So, previously also you know you could connect a remote sensor, a sensor which is somewhat far away to a particular let us say a controller. So, for that people used to use uh, various kinds of communication technologies. For example, people used to use uh, 4 to 20 milliampere analog technology where you know I mean current transmission used to be uh, used to be employed. Current transmission as we have seen uh, has you know certain benefits. Uh, in terms of noise immunity, but it is still a comparatively much more primitive technology which has several limitations. So, the field bus replaces this 4 to 20 ampere analog technology and it also provides integrated control and monitoring functions on field mounted devices. Previously what used to happen is that the field mounted devices mostly used to uh, were not able to perform computation. So, in that sense they were not able to they were not intelligent. So, they were mainly uh, devices, so devices which will handle the power and will actually create the create the physical effect maybe in terms of flow for example, a valve maybe a maybe a valve positioner will actually drive the valve shaft or it can be a it can be a heater right. So, <coughs> previously the field monitoring devices were were unintelligent and therefore, the all the control monitoring activities had to be had to be situated at a at a at a host computer. So, every so all the signals had to be carried away to the central computer uh, incurring very large wirings and uh, making the data noise prone 
So, these defects will be removed if we can have some intelligent on the field mounted devices. So, that some abstract command signals will actually come and the uh, control signals which have to be the low level control signals where the feedback is taken and the uh, controller actually generates the output such signals can be computed on the device itself. So, and it one of the great advantages of having a digital communication network is that it enhances data availability. So, now uh, one can very easily implement planned wide coordination activities. So, you can you can you can coordinate let us say suppose you have one shop which is feeding into into another shop or you have one assembly station which is feeding into another assembly station. So, if you want to coordinate the activity between these stations uh, for more efficient yeah, production then 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 that is now possible because over a over a digital communication network it is much easier to easier easier and faster to share large amounts of data from from one device to another and therefore you can by using software you can have much more intelligent coordination in your uh, for for uh, efficient and reliable production so these are some of the features which are available on a field bus and naturally we have so one of the one of the why field bus one of the advantages is that you have high speed and reliable communication so you both increase speed and you increase reliability reliability comes from digital communication reliability comes from various kinds of special kinds of media like fiber optic cables used in the in the field bus system compared to wires which were used in the older systems so because this is very important here for two reasons the first reason is that the first reason is that the industrial environment is actually very harsh right so there are lots of you know here somebody may be doing electric arc welding there are there are large power uh, current carrying conductors around so you have a lot of magnetic and electric interferences so so the environment is very noisy so that so the chances of data getting corrupted are actually very high and second thing is that the consequences of having corrupt data because it's a control application as we have stressed many times over this course that this is industrial automation is a critical uh, kind of computing and uh, is is necessary here so here if uh, data is corrupted then that can lead to a lot of you know devastating consequences in terms of money in terms of human safety and things like that so therefore reliability of communication is actually extremely important so using field bus you increase both the speed of communication so you can exchange large amounts of data over small times and you can exchange them reliably so <clears throat> then enhanced data availability we have we have we have already talked about them so you you can you can actually because of this network which you have you can actually exchange large amounts of data from devices and then can have a larger can have coordinations over over larger areas you can do monitoring you can do whole production process optimization so such functions it, it is now possible to do in an in an automated fashion and in a much more timely fashion than it was possible before then easy configurability and interoperability of system components this is actually very very important a, a process automation system contains hundreds and thousands of various kinds of electronic components so if you want if you want that each one will actually talk to another in, in a language you will actually exchange data in a format which which is which, which is acceptable to the other and will uh, will make meaning of the data which it receives from the other then you you need to configure them properly and configuring hundreds of thousands of uh, devices on a network is is not a simple task firstly secondly i mean devices always get added so every time you add a device you have uh, you have a configuration problem secondly second thing is interoperability interoperability means that two devices are interoperable when they when they talk seamlessly with each other now previously what used to happen is that <clears throat> because of the proprietary nature of the technology which which was not standard so you know company a will actually company a's controller will probably talk to company a's operator station but it will not talk to company B's operator station. So every company used to have their own standards. Now when you have that, once you buy certain parts of the equipment from a from a given company, then you actually get tired to that company because if you buy anything else from from another company which may have better functionality, which may be cheaper, 
but still you are you are you are always stuck because it won't talk to the talk to the controller which you already have so that means that these devices are not interoperable so that problem has been removed because now it is it is it is demanded that all field bus compatible if you if any company manufactures a, de a device and it is declared to be field, uh, field bus standard compatible then it will be interoperable with any other field bus compatible uh, field bus compatible device from whatever company it is manufactured so therefore the options for the customer have increased many fold this will foster competition and will uh, bring in products of improved quality and, and functionality at cheaper costs. So, this is this has huge consequence. So, this is why you actually standardize uh, equipment. It, it, it's just like the PC market, you know. So, if you if you you can always buy a a uh, let us say a network card from company B and a, and a and a hard disk controller from company C and a motherboard from A and if you put them onto a onto a onto a PC cabinet, they are going to work without any problem, right. So, we want that kind of interoperability in the, in the case of industrial automation also. So, that, that is offered by field bus. Then there are huge wiring advantages that is because it is a because it is a <coughs> network on which devices are hung you have huge wiring advantages and remember that that wiring although it, 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 it just means cables, but these wires are these are data cables they are they are, they are not only expensive they have to be laid installed commissioned, and they have to be maintained right. So, that is a that that is a huge task and therefore, wiring is uh, the advantage of wiring is is also non trivial in the case of an industrial automation project. See the wiring advantage how it comes, it comes because of the fact that <coughs> if you have let us say 4 to 20 milli ampere, which means that a few number of devices have to be can be connected if you if you directly connect point to point communication then for every pair of devices you have to connect two wires to actually another point where it will where it will receive the data. If you have 4 to 20 milliampere technology then on the same pair of on the same current loop you can connect a number of devices true, but that number of devices are very less. So, what happens is that you 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 make a for example, see this diagram that uh, here you have a number of devices. So, from each device you run a pair of wires and these are get connected to the junction box and from there they run through a wiring duct. So, each for each device you have a pair of wires, then they get into a marshalling box and then finally connect to a connect to a controller IO card. Now, this look at the look at the amount of wiring. So, for 3 you you need to run 6 3 pairs of conductors contrasted to that look at a, a this is here see what happens is that here also here you have these field bus devices. So, the field bus devices can be locally connected to a to a to a junction box or or let us say a remote I, I mean some kind of an you know a, a, a data concentrator if this that is if they cannot be directly hung from a network if they can be directly hung from a network that is that is that is even simpler. And then from this junction box actually starts the network. We will see this physical configuration just now. So, here you have only one pair of wires over which digital data is transmitted either in baseband or in or by using modulation. So, <coughs> for all these devices you actually need to run just one pair of wires to the controller. So, the controller so, so either these th this data that you have are actually time multiplexed. So, either either the time multiplex or if you use a you, if you use some kind of a carrier then it will be frequency division multiplexed. So, <coughs> let us say in, in the case of uh, time multiplexing what is going to happen is, the, is, is that different devices are actually communicating high speed digital data on the same pair of wires actually at different times. So, and the and the and the controller which is here is actually receiving that stream of data and then from data that data it is actually able to understand that is which data is typically organized into what is known as packets and from by by examining each packet is it actually understands that from which device this data packet is coming and to which device it should be it should go right. So, this is done all digitally using using digital electronics within the local controller. So, as far as wiring is concerned you actually run only 
one pair of wires. This is the big, this gives the biggest wiring advantage. There is <coughs> of, you know, having digital communication, but there is a further advantage which comes because you have a network bus. So we are going to look at that. So before we do that, so we the, here is a here is a comparison between 4 to 20 milliampere, which is a pretty old analog technology, with field bus. So in in a here, you can have number of devices per wire is one. Sometimes you can connect some of some devices in series. In a field bus, you can connect large number of devices, and then these devices can be further increased by using by using repeaters and and other things, like. <coughs> On one device at a time, since you are sending a current, so you, you can actually send only one, one current, right? Because, because the data is continuous, all the time it is coming. While you can have thousands of variables can be, can be transmitted over the same pair of wires in the field bus. Signal integrity, because it is analog communication, although current communication is uh, more immune than voltage communication, uh, but still it is much more prone to degrading. <coughs> while the immunity of field bus devices because it's a, because it's, because it's digital data uh, it's quite excellent then diagnostic information because you have because in in the field bus because you have intelligent devices so therefore these devices the intelligent devices means they, these devices can actually examine their own signals and can do computing to actually understand whether the device is <coughs> working nicely or not, properly or not, or, or, or whether some fault has developed. So, <coughs> such, such information is actually called diagnostic information. So, you know, <coughs> controllers can actually, actually need, a, need, a, need a lot of diagnostic information because uh, otherwise th when, when things are running in an, in an automated fashion, one needs to know whether, you know, all actuators, sensors are actually giving you the right data or is it that the sensor has failed and, and, and the data that you are, that you are uh, getting is actually uh, not proper. So in this case, the field bus devices themselves being intelligent, they themselves can evaluate their, their diagnostic state and then send information to the top level controllers based on which these controllers can take action, right? <coughs> and extensive diagnostic facility is provided for the field bus. <coughs> there is also support for field control that is PID like controllers can be mounted on the devices and they can be commanded from a, from a host station, they can, they can be configured. So such field level control support exists in field bus while none exists in the 4 to 20 milliampere loop. So this is, uh, this is the, this what the advantage is coming back to this efficiency of physical connection, you can understand this. Suppose you have, let me, suppose you have, you already have these nodes and they need to interact with each other, right? So if you have point to point communication, then you need to connect all these wires, right? So you see the, see the number of physical connections that, that has to be made across the plant. Actually, these, these uh, distances can be quite substantial and <coughs> if you have a point to point communication system on the other hand if you have a network then you are then you are actually running a network all along the periphery of the plant now for example suppose you want to add suppose you want to add another device so you put another device and suppose it actually talks to four other devices so you have to now you have to now connect all these four wires if you had if you had point to point communication. On the other hand, if you have a network, then what you will do is that you will simply hang this, simply connect this to the nearest point in the network, right? So it will simply be hung on the network and then it is on the network bus. So it can communicate with any, any other device on the network bus. So you can understand that you, if, if you compare, even in this diagram, if you compare the length of the yellow lines, with those of the green lines, then you will understand that what is the what is the kind of cabling advantages that you can get when you have a bus or ring kind of network running all across the plant, right? And this diagram itself shows the picture, but 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 when you have thousands of such devices at that time, this this advantage becomes, I mean, predominant. 
<clears throat> now, here in this diagram, you see how devices can be connected on the field bus. So, there are so you can connect them either you know like a tree. So, you can either have a separate branch from a tree. So, for example, here you see that this is the this is this is the main network bus running. From that network bus, you can hang a a line which is a remote IO. Remote IO means that it is it is a it is a special electronic device which actually accepts data from a number of devices which are connected in a point to point fashion. So, this is a control device which is connected by a pair of wires to this remote IO. This is a positioner which is valve positioner suppose which is connected. So, similar now this device is actually a network device. These are not network devices. So, this device will actually accept the data and will and then this device will transmit on the network after you know making packets out of it. So, this so you can you can connect a a a number of point to point devices to the network either directly like here. So, here you have a device which is which is which is directly connected onto the network bus this is the this is the main network bus running right. And either you can connect that or you can connect devices which are not directly network connectable with the help of what is known as a remote IO block right. So, these are the two ways that you can connect devices on the field bus. For example, this this then shows that if you have a really a, you know very wide plant area network which actually can run into you know kilometers. If you have seen big factories, you will know that uh, for example, if you go to Telco or if you want to go to Tesco or some some big steel plant, then you will see that this this factory is actually are several square kilometers. So they are they are they are they are very large factories, and therefore, if you want to have a plant wide network, then you can have you 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 actually have to have very large long distances uh, are involved so this figure shows that that over such long uh, distances still you can actually configure a network so he you know he this is by using bus segments so there are several bus segments which can be directly connected over a cable and then several bus segments can be connected by by actually what are known as you know bridges or repeaters so you know this is a repeater so, a repeater actually is you see connects this is a bus segment let me try a better color. So, this is a bus segment and this repeater actually talks to so, so, so whatever data. So, now suppose this number 4 device wants to talk with number 2. So, it will transmit this data on this bus it will go to the repeater and then the repeater knows whether this is actually meant for it will go to this repeater it will also go to this repeater. So, now this repeater will know that it is meant for its a device on its own segment. So, it will retransmit it on the bus while this repeater will know that that it is not meant for a device device number 2 does not exist on its on, on its on its segment. So, therefore, it will not transmit it. So, actually you can you, you can transmit data over from one segment to another using such repeaters and therefore, you can configure a very very uh, wide network or network which are which is sprawled which, which actually sprawls over uh, kilometers using a local area network technology. So, So, this is this gives us an, an idea of how an industrial network is is physically connected. So, there is a there is a, there is a bus which is running all over the all over the factory this bus may be segmented using repeaters etcetera. And then you have actually have to hang devices on this segment and then they will talk to other devices in that segment or in other segments and using the the you can see that the field bus supports both all kinds of devices devices which are directly connectable on the network or which are not connectable on the network as well. <coughs> 